of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 521, A Day of Rest and Gladness. <coughs> Oh. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with you. you. <clears throat> In peace, let us pray to the Lord. to God our strength and raise a loud shout to the God of Jacob. 
Raise the song and sound the temple, the merry harp and the lyre. Blow the ram's horn at the new moon and at the full moon, the day of our feast. For this is the statute of Israel, the law of the God of Jacob. God laid it as a solemn charge upon Joseph, going out over the land of Egypt, where I, where I heard a voice I did not know. I, I eased your shoulder from the burden. Your hands were set free from the grave digger's basket. You called on me in trouble, and I delivered you. I answered you from the secret place of thunder, and tested you at the waters of Mirabah. Hear from my people, and I will admonish you, O Israel, if you would but listen to me. There shall be no strange God among you. You shall not worship a foreign God. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. Our second reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 4. 5 through 12. We do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we shall have, but we have this treasure in clay jars so that it may be clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to the death, to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise as you are able to welcome the gospel. began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abathar was the high priest and ate the bread of the presence which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat. And he gave some to his companions. Then he asked, said to them, the Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is the Lord even of the Sabbath. Again, he entered a synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath. They watched to accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered man, come forward. Then he said to them, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath? to save life or to kill, but they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. 
The Pharisees went out and, and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Long time ago, well, in the 1980s, which was a long time for some people, I was in a car accident with my children. I had a little tiny Dodge Colt. You know the one that looked like a pregnant roller skate? <laughs> <laughs> and I had the right of way on a freeway. I was turning left. I was stopped for traffic to clear. And as I started to turn, another one who was at the stop sign turned out and T-boned me mm. with all three of my children in the car. I never had a compact car again. <laughs> no one was hurt, thank God. But one of my sons said, Mom, I'm going to tell on you. Tell what? You were speeding <laughs> back there. Okay. Okay. Well, I had come from one county, like same one road. In one county, the speed limit was 55. In the next county, once you crossed that line, it was 45. And I was still going 55. And my child in the back seat was watching. So I went for a whole two miles at 10 miles over the speed limit. And I, I can't fault his logic. If I had not been speeding, we would not have been there to be hit. And he told the sheriff. <laughs> he told the sheriff that I was speeding back there. And the sheriff told him, you keep an eye on her. <laughs> and he let me know he was keeping an eye on her. And never again did I exceed the speed limit while he was in the car. <laughs> That's how the Pharisees were acting. They were right, according to them and their rules. They were worried about what could happen if people were breaking the Sabbath rule. Do you know about fencing the Torah, anyone? The Torah, of course, is the Pentateuch, the first five books. And it has all the rules in it, the 423 laws that of the Jewish people. And what it is is to build a fence around the Word of God so you don't accidentally break it. Because once you accidentally break it, that's the end. You gotta start all over again. You're unclean. Well, the Pharisees had built a wall around the Torah, and then they built a moat, and then they put up a fence, and then they put up like a castle around it, so you don't break the rules. Plucking grains of wheat on the Sabbath was considered work. But you notice they didn't ask, they didn't answer Jesus when he said, do I do good or evil? Is it lawful to do good or evil on the Sabbath? They didn't have an answer. So he got angry and we don't like Jesus angry very much, but we understand why he gets angry. So Jesus reached out and healed a man's hand. Tradition and custom. That's what the Pharisees were going by. 
And that's what a lot of churches go by. We have our traditions. We have our customs. But we should always be Jesus-centered. What would Jesus do? Jesus would invite, not exclude. Jesus would heal, not ignore. Jesus worked on Sunday all the time. He worked on Saturday and the Sabbath and all the time because that is what being the child of God is. Sometimes our vision can get skewed. Sometimes we'll follow rules and not know why, but we know it's the rules. <clears throat> My son was absolutely correct in calling out my speeding. And that was most important to him that day. To me, it was having my car smashed in and afraid that my children were going to get hurt. Now I want to talk about the Corinthians. Does anybody know, does anybody know Greek history? I guess not. <laughs> but I would say Rachel probably does. <clears throat> I don't know about that. <laughs> Corinth is on an isthmus. It was very important in the time of the Greek Empire, the time of Alexander the Great <clears throat> and all that. It has three ports. It was in wars. There were people from all over. It was a very diverse very diverse uh, place, town. And around the time of Jesus, one of the emperors, I think it was Claudius, kicked all the Jews out of Rome. And they ended up in Corinth. Well, Peter went there on his second missionary journey. And there he met Aquila, and Priscilla, the tent makers. And he worked with them. He was there for about a year and a half. And he taught them. And he went to the synagogues. And he was kicked out because he was blasphemous. So he preached to the Gentiles, to this very diverse group of people from all over. And he had someone that had become a leader in the church, a man named Apollos. And Apollos was from Alexandria. He was Egyptian. So what happened after Paul left, we've got two letters from him. What happened was all these different sects began to pop up. It was like the Reformation before there was Catholicism. Some people said, I follow Apollos. I follow Peter. I follow Paul. And they were so wrapped up in things like eat, drink, and be merry. Because they were saved. They had been baptized. They had been anointed with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, nothing they did today <laughs> is going to matter because we're saved. Have you ever met people like that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> and they were all about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. This is where talking in tongues came in. They thought that you were not really, didn't really have the Holy Spirit unless you could talk in tongues. That was the only indicator. So they had an, a hierarchy of gifts. But gifts? Do we place one gift above another. God gave us the gift of the Sabbath. 
for us, for our families, for our animals, that they don't work and neither do we. So, you know, we, people try to make it into something that you have to earn by setting up all these rules. The church in Corinth did the same. The Holy Spirit is a gift, but if you don't have the right gift, then are you really gifted? Divisiveness in, has always been a part of the church. Because the church is made of people. The church is made of humans. Humans who are faulty, who are all too human, and who fail sometimes. But it is the God and Jesus who knows us, who made us, who brought us forth, who lives with us and walks with us, who heals us, who challenges us, who loves us beyond any human comprehension. So we don't have to argue about whether to work on Sunday or whether picking grain is actually working. We don't need to argue or, or put ourselves above anyone else. And we certainly do not need to earn the gifts that God has so freely bestowed on us. The gift of each other the gift of fellowship and of love, the gift of this earth to spend our time worshiping our creator. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Now it's on. Uh, I need help sometimes. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> Guide our church to expressions of faith that bring rest and release. Teach your faithful people to be attentive to the spiritual, physical, and social weariness of our neighbors as we proclaim your grace through tangible acts of mercy and justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Keep us mindful in the rhythms of nature as the days lengthen and the seasons shift towards summer. Grant relief to areas facing flooding or drought and bring favorable weather to the flourishing of crops, gardens, and orchards. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Where there is affliction in our world, bring healing. Where world leaders are perplexed, bring clarity of vision. Give a spirit of discernment to political advisors, institutional researchers, economic analysts, and all vocations that inform the work of governments and policymakers. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Provide wholeness and respite to all who are weary, those who struggle in any way and those who care for them. Especially today, we lift up before you Beverly and Glenn, the family of Dr. Bob, Judith and Richard, Helen, Ruby and Cliff, Wayne, Anne, Judy and Bobby, Anne, Rachel, Sarah and Danny, Gail and Hoover, Randy, Philip, Linda, Ray, Leonard, Tona, Terry, Sarah, Waylon, Reverend Al and Beverly, Stephen, Jean and Jim, Bob, Nicholas, Milton and Glenda, Susan, and all those we name aloud or in our hearts before you. Jesus bless them. Strengthen first responders and health care workers in their times of exhaustion or frustration. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Stir our hearts toward abundant generosity among neighbors who experience hunger and food insecurities. Bless feeding ministries and community efforts, especially community gardens, farmers markets, food pantries, and little free pantries, our blessing box. Open both our hearts and our tables. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. As we remember the communion of saints whose lives made visible the saving life in Jesus Christ, guide us by their example to embody the treasure of your love for the sake of your world, our world, until we come to our final rest in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. 
Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace using American Sign Language or whatever is comfortable for you. The gentle healer came into our town today. He touched blind eyes and the darkness left to stay. But more than the blindness, he took their sins away. The gentle healer came into our town today. The gentle healer came into our town today. He spoke one word that was all he had to say. And the one who had died just rose up straight away. The gentle healer came into our town today. Oh, he seems like just an ordinary man With dirty feet and rough but gentle hands But the words he says are hard to understand And yet he seems like just an ordinary man The gentle he left our town today. I just looked around and found me gone away. Some folks from town have followed him, they say, that the gentle healer is the truth, the life, the
Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy to give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. I will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is prepared.
is rise to our evil. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 729, The Church of Christ in Every Age. Pentecost is here. We're in ordinary time. Many blessings upon you. Let us go in peace to serve our Lord. Thanks be to God. God.